In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So, dear friends on our YouTube channel, welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist. Can you believe it? It's already day 51 of lockdown. Day 51 when we are, have been struggling with coming to terms with the coronavirus pandemic. But now we're continuing our joy in the resurrection of the Lord as we continue our time through Easter. It's Saturday of week five of Easter as we rejoice in the risen Lord. We are the hands and the feet of Christ. We are the means for his love and mercy to touch the lives of those around us. We ask for forgiveness for the times we have failed to act in this way. Lord, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you have revealed the truth to us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you lead us into the fullness of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, through the regenerating power of baptism, you have been pleased to confer on us heavenly life. Grant, we pray, that those you render capable of immortality by justifying them may by your guidance attain the fullness of glory. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul came to Derbe and to Lystra. A disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the brethren at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews that were in those places, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they went on their way through the cities, they delivered to them for observance the decisions which had been reached by the apostles and elders who were at Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened and in the faith, and they increased in numbers daily. And they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia, and when they had come opposite Marzia, they attempted to go into Bithynia. But the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So, passing by Marzia, they went down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing, pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when he had seen the vision, Immediately we sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing for joy. Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us, we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Indeed, how good is the Lord, eternal his merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. 
cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own, but because you are not of the world. But I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all this they will do to you on my account, because they do not know him who sent me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have just heard Jesus continuing his final testament to his friends and he offers words of caution. If you choose to follow me, your lives will involve challenges, he's saying. And then he goes on to say, because you are my friends, I offer you a new way of living in harmony. It's quite simple, love one another. But there's a catch. If you choose to follow me, which means following the one that sent me, you will be hated. You will no longer belong to the world, and the world will persecute you. Challenging words indeed. After the resurrection, the disciples were in kind of an in-between time. This is the time they did not choose, but they had no choice but to come to terms with what they had lost. They, although they had the risen Lord, they were still thinking in terms of the Lord they walked with from village to village and town to town. Initially, they hid. Some of them tried to return to their lives before Jesus. And it seems that at some point they came to the realization that there was no going back. They accepted that they lived of ex experiences of Jesus including his death and resurrection, had transformed them. This was such a powerful, such an extraordinary transformation that they no longer fitted in with the concepts, the thought patterns of the world that they knew before Jesus. And the only way out of this kind of in-between time is to go forward and I can imagine this decision involved many conversations, many questions like, can we return to our old lives? If we don't go back, how do we go forward? This is all new, uncharted territory. How can we decide now that our master is gone? Remember, Jesus told us we'd be hated and persecuted. If the world hates and persecutes us, can we succeed? My imagining of these questions is influenced by where, we, where I see South Africa today. We are in an in-between time, a place we did not choose to go. The COVID-19 coronavirus has inflicted excruciating physical, mental and emotional pain on so many people has turned life upside down for us, but it is allowing time for transformation. And like the disciples, we cannot go back to the time before the pandemic. We've got no choice 
but to come to terms with our situation. But we do have the freedom to choose how we integrate these experiences and who we become. So an important question would be, how can I decide what to do? The Jesuit tradition offers us the gift of spiritual discernment to help us to decide or to choose how to proceed. We see a glimpse of this at work in today's reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Timothy rely on the Holy Spirit to guide their teaching and their mission travels. But note, they didn't just sit back and say, God will choose for me. They would be rejected in one place, they would move on to another, and so the con gospel continued to filter out into new areas. If objectors put roadblocks in the way of their mission, they saw that as a blessing in disguise. Paul wanted to preach the gospel in Asia, that would be modern-day Western Turkey, but something forced him to change plans, and he interpreted this as being prevented by the Holy Spirit from preaching the message. So a solution was found for every problem, and the gospel message continued to spread. And so today we use St. Ignatius Loyola's rules for discernment to help make wise choices and sound decisions. So I encourage to read further about this process of discernment. The first principle is really is a desire to choose the good. As St. Ignatius puts it, our one choice should be this. I want and I choose what better leads to God's deepening life in me. So St. Ignatius' other rules for discernment help us to make choices from attractive alternatives. And of a particular importance is listening to the inner movements of our hearts. So these rules of discernment provide a disciplined and a systematic way to reflect on our feelings as we respond to God and the events in our daily lives. They give us the gift of a reasoning heart. And so the Ignatian discernment rests in the conviction that God speaks directly to each of us and we can have confidence in our own experience of God as we develop eyes to see and ears to hear. But in our time, the world looks back to the early church and sees the impact of the apostles' choice to follow in Christ's footsteps, no matter the cost. And when the world looks back to the COVID-19 pandemic, what will they say about our choice to follow Christ? And now, let us offer up our prayers and petitions to the Lord. We pray that the Spirit of Jesus may continue to direct the expansion of the Church and inspire new vocations for her missionary efforts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are persecuted on account of their witness to the teachings of Jesus and to the moral values of his Church, that they may continue to speak the truth in love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the Lord, his kindness endures forever, may show his faithfulness to all who are suffering, all who are oppressed and hungry, all who need love and understanding in this time of the pandemic. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty and merciful God, love of the human race, healer of all our wounds, in whom there is no shadow of death, save us in this time of crisis. Grant wisdom and courage to our leaders. Watch over all medical people as they tend the sick and work for a cure. Stir in us a sense of solidarity beyond all isolation. 
If our doors are closed, let our hearts be open. By the power of your love, destroy the virus of fear, the hope that, the hope, that hope may never die, and the light of Easter, the triumph of life, will shine on us and the whole world. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the Lord risen from the dead, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Holy Mary, health of the sick, pray for us. St. Joseph, guardian of us all, pray for us. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received but attain the gifts that are eternal. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll use preface number five of Easter and the second Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of all to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Booty and Duncan, our bishops, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now, let's just pause for a moment in silent prayer as we pray for peace in our hearts, peace in our relationships with those around us, peace in the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Dear friends, in the 51st day of lockdown, we're still unable to come together in church. So I invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and a desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God who has redeemed you and made you adopted children through the resurrection of his only Son bless you and fill you with joy. Amen. May the God who has bestowed on you the gifts of redemption and lasting freedom make you heirs of eternal life. Amen. May the God who joined you to Christ's resurrection by faith and baptism lead you to live life justly and so bring you to your home in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.